Welcome back. In this video, let's learn how to insert a new node at a given index in the list. In this case, the method will accept the node value as well as the index at which the node needs to be inserted. The index will lie in the range of 0 to size of the linked list, both inclusive. Now we are going to learn this across three scenarios. The first scenario is where the index is less than 0 or greater than the size of the list. In such a scenario, we simply return from the function. Let's go back to Replit and take care of this scenario first. Let's call the method insert which accepts a value that the new node should contain and the index at which the new node should be inserted. To handle scenario 1, we make use of an if statement. If index is less than 0 or if index is greater than the size of the list, we return from the method. We are basically ensuring the index is valid. And you are always welcome to add a message before returning from the method for more clarity in the log statements. Let's now move on to the second scenario. The second scenario is where index is equal to 0. That is, inserting the new node as the first node in the list. Inserting a new node at the beginning is the same as prepending. Since we already have a method for that, we can reuse it. Let's go back to Replit and write the code. If index is equal to 0, this dot prepend and we pass in value as an argument. Prepend will take care of adding the node either to an empty list or an existing list. Make sure to not increment the size here as that is handled by the prepend method. This code now takes care of invalid index and inserting a node at the beginning of the list. Let's now proceed to the final scenario where index is valid and greater than 0. Let's first visually understand what it means to insert a node somewhere in the middle of a list. In this example you see we have three nodes in the list. We are going to treat the position similar to arrays so the nodes are positioned at 0, 1 and 2. Let's say we need to insert a new node at index 2. That is, in between the nodes positioned currently at 1 and 2. The only rule we have to fulfill after insertion is that the nodes must point to the next node in the right order. So what we have to do is make the new node point to the node that node 1 is pointing at and change the next pointer from node 1 to the new node. When it comes to writing that logic though, it requires a little bit more understanding of what we are going to write, so let me help you visualize that as well. Now whenever we have to do something that is not at the head of the list, it generally involves a temporary pointer that moves across the list. To insert an element at a given index, we need to get hold of the node previous to that index. For example, to insert a node at index 2, we need a reference to node at index 1. For that purpose, we are going to use a temporary pointer called previous. And here is how we are going to use it. We will start off with previous pointing at the head node. We will then traverse the list advancing the previous pointer till we reach index 1. At this point, we will point the new node's next pointer to the previous node's next pointer. So the new node will now point at the node at index 2. That takes care of the new node's connection. 
We then connect the previous node next to the new node. This will provide the continuity required. The new node gets inserted at index 2. The head continues to point at the first node and we have our new linked list. As you can see, insertion is as simple as changing the next pointer of the individual nodes. Let's go back to Replit and write the code. If the index is greater than zero, so else block, we begin by creating a new instance of the node class. This is needed as we had delegated node creation as well to the prepend method when index is equal to zero. Next, we initialize the previous pointer to head. Next, we add a for loop to advance the previous pointer. So for let i is equal to zero, i less than index minus one, i plus plus, that is till we reach the node previous to the index, we advance the previous pointer. Previous is equal to previous dot next. Like I mentioned, to advance the previous pointer, we point it at its own next pointer. The for loop will exit when the previous pointer is at the previous node. At this point in time, we have to reorganize the links as we had seen in the slide. We change node.next to previous.next, which will ensure the new node is connected to the existing list and we connect the previous node to the new node. So previous.next is equal to node. Finally, we increment the size by one. This pretty much is the implementation of the insert method given an index. Let's verify if it works as expected. Let me rewrite this bit. We are still going to call is empty, get size and print. But now we're going to call the insert method, passing in 10 as a value and the index is zero. I'm also going to call list.print to ensure insert works as expected. Run the code and we see 10 logged in the console, our first element in the list. Let's now insert our second element. We're going to insert 20 at index zero. So this once again is going to be the first element in the list. Call print again, run the code, and we now see 20 followed by 10. If I call list.insert 30 at index position one and call print, run the code, we see 30 at index one. Finally, list.insert 40 at position two, list.print, and let's also call get size. Run the code. We see 20, 30 at index position one, 40 at index position two, and then 10. The size of the list is four. Our insert at a given index method works as expected. Now I know this is a little tricky to understand, but I want you to rewatch the slides explanation where you can first understand visually and then come back to the code. I guarantee you it will start to make more sense. All right then, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and in the next video, let's see how to remove an element from a given index.